Hi everybody. Wanted to deal with another section of Fenton Hort. Some of you will be familiar with his name as along with his good friend and colleague Brooke Foss Westcott, the chief uh, ref revisers, the, the ones who came up with the text of the revised version back in the 1880s. And um, the basis, the textual, the Greek textual basis for many modern translations as well, including the New World Translation of the Watchtower. So Fenton Hort left a legacy behind. Uh, this particular book is one of the few books he completed, the Christian Ecclesia, a f as fine a book on the church as I have, have yet read, and still in print. It was published in 1897, the same year as C.T. Russell published the fourth volume of the Studies in the Scriptures then called Millennial Dawn Series. The, in the Millennial Dawn Series it was called the Day of Vengeance, but when it was reprinted as Studies in the Scriptures it was called the Battle of Armageddon. So interesting that my edition of the 1897 original is the 1914 edition of the Christian Ecclesia. And at the end of this book Hort sums up his thoughts about the organization of the church at the in the apostolic period and beyond. and. This is a, a, a very sober corrective to the kind of impressions you get if you are in a big church or a cult like the Watchtower when you are taught that organization was of the essence in the first century as well. As you know, if you're a Jehovah's Witness or knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable about their religion, the concept that God always had an organization and that there was a governing body even in the first century Acts 15 is the source for this. We've already done a video on that. I'll link that at the end. But right now, here's Hort's mature conclusions at the end of the Christian Ecclesia as to organization in the church in the first century. While therefore matters belonging to what is called the organization of the Ecclesia are undoubtedly an important part of the subject, it would be a serious mistake to treat them as the whole. There is indeed a certain ambiguity in the word organization as thus used. Nothing perhaps has been more prominent in our examination of the ecclesiae, that is the plural of ecclesia, of the apostolic age than the fact that the ecclesia itself, i.e. apparently the sum of all its male adult members, is the primary body and it would seem even the primary authority. It may be that this state of things was in some ways a mark of immaturity and that a better and riper organization must of necessity involve the creation of more special organs of the community. Still, the very origin and fundamental nature of the Ecclesia as a community of disciples renders it impossible that the principle should, be, should rightly become obsolete. That is the principle of the local Ecclesia and the elders' authority in that local ecclesia. Hort goes on, in a word, we cannot properly speak of an organization of a community from which the greater part of its members are excluded. The, the true way, the apostolic way, of regarding offices or officers in the ecclesia is to regard them as organs of its corporate life for special purposes, so that the offices of an ecclesia at any period are only a part of its organization, unless indeed it unhappily has no other element of organization. In the apostolic age we have seen that the offices instituted in the ecclesia were the creation of successive experiences and changes of circumstances, involving at the same time a partial adoption first of Jewish precedents by the ecclesia of Judea, and then apparently of Judean Christian precedents by the ecclesiae or the churches of the dispersion and the Gentiles. There is no trace in the New Testament that any ordinances on this subject were prescribed by the Lord or that any such ordinances were set up as permanently binding by the Twelve or by St. Paul or by the Ecclesia at large. Their faith in the Holy Spirit and his perpetual guidance was too much of a reality to make that possible. The apostles, we have seen, were essentially personal witnesses of the Lord and his resurrection, bearing witness by acts of beneficent power and by word the preaching of the kingdom. Round this, they, their definite function grew up in process of time, an indefinite authority, 
the natural and right and necessary consequence of their unique position. It is difficult to think how the early ecclesia of Judea could possibly have staggered on without that apostolic authority, but it came to the apostles by the ordinary action of divine providence, not, so far as we can see, by any formal divine command. The government which they thus exercised was a genuine government, all the more genuine and effectual because it was, in modern phrase, constitutional. It did not supersede the responsibility and action of the elders or the ecclesia at large, but called them out. About the exceptional position of James, there will be a word to say just now. The apostles were not in any proper sense officers of the ecclesia. The first officers who are definitely mentioned are the seven. I need not repeat the precise purpose of their appointment. Here he alludes to Acts chapter 6. It was for a strictly subordinate and external function, though men of wisdom and the Holy Spirit were needed for it. Of officers in some respects analogous, under the name diakonoi, that is, ministrants, or as the watchtower would want to call them, ministerial servants, deacons, we have been hearing at Ephesus and in 1 Timothy, at least in some sense, in Philippi. But though the seven of Jerusalem are the first officers mentioned, we found reason to suspect that of still earlier date, certainly not much later, were the elders. This apparently universal institution for administration and in part, of, in part for teaching was adopted by Christians apparently universally. We have distinct evidence for it in the New Testament at Jerusalem, in Lyconia, at Ephesus, in Crete, probably in Thessalonica. It is mentioned in the epistles of St. James, addressed to Jewish Christians of the whole dispersion, and of St. Peter, addressed to the Christians of Asia Minor. Of officers higher than elders, we find nothing that points to an institution or system. Nothing like the Episcopal system, that is the bishop system of later times. In the New Testament, the word episkopos, as applied to men, that is the word from which we get bishops and episcopal, as applied to men mainly, if not always, is not a title, but a description of the elder's function. So it's the same as elder in the New Testament. On the other hand, the monarchical principle, which is the essence of episcopacy, receives in the apostolic age a practical, though a limited recognition, not so much in the absolutely exceptional position of St. Peter in the early days at Jerusalem, or the equally exceptional position of St. Paul throughout the ecclesiae of his own foundation, as in the position ultimately held by St. James at Jerusalem, and also to a limited extent in the temporary functions entrusted by St. Paul to Timothy and Titus when he left them behind for a little while to complete arrangements begun by himself at Ephesus and in Crete, respectively. In this, as in so many other things, is seen the futility of endeavoring to make the apostolic history into a set of authoritative precedents to be rigorously copied without regard to time and place, thus turning the gospel into a second Levitical code. The apostolic age is full of embodiments of purposes and principles of the most instructive kind, but the responsibility of choosing the means was left forever to the ecclesia itself and to each ecclesia, guided by ancient precedent on the one hand and ad adaptation to present and future needs on the other. The lesson book of the ecclesia and of every ecclesia is not a law, but a history. So it's clear that Fenton Hort did not feel that there was a, a pyramidal organization in the first century and there was a governing body in the first century but the the locus of authority was the local church so I'll, I'll link to other videos we've done where Hort talks about the church in greater detail the church in Acts and the specifically specifically the Jerusalem Council and the import of that and also to a, a video we did on his colleague Westcott on Hebrews Hebrews Westcott observes does not have much trace of organization at all. So I'll put Hort's other videos and, and the Westcott on Hebrews on your screen.